All right, so I'm in my kitchen, and you're wondering why the hell I'm starting a Hoon TV kitchen video. Uh, well, it's not because of that. It's because YouTube is so awesome that recently, and not totally recently, uh, this awesome dude from Australia uh, who calls himself, and that's what I reckon, has been doing so many really good videos. Make sure you don't watch them with your kids because he tends to swear a little, but he's hilarious if you're an adult. And uh, he's obviously a chef or something like that. He knows how to cook, so... Subscribe to him, subscribe to Hoon TV as well, and hopefully he'll say the same. But uh, I'm going to have a crack at the uh, Nat's, uh, what do you call it, quarantine spag bowl, because he said, you know, F jar sauce, don't use jar sauce. So I've got some uh, tomatoes here and a bit of garlic and obviously some pasta and other crap like that. So check him out. Check out Hoon TV. Definitely not going to show you me cooking. I'm going to cook my dinner. I'm going to hit the edit suite and hopefully smash out the next Frank the Tank video. Well, here's Perry wearing his famous drag challenge t shirt. Thanks to our good mates, the um, couriers we won't mention the name of. This is actually the second set of headers that got sent through to the car. Um, Ryan and the lads up at Advance got these all organised, sent them off to get uh, ceramic coated, and then they ended up in the Bermuda Triangle somewhere. So this is the second set, and thankfully they've actually arrived this time. So here we go, let's get them out. How's the packing crew? It's pretty, uh, done well. pretty good. <laughs> They've done real well. Gav is what's commonly known as a pest. He loves being filmed. I had to use that this morning. Oh, pretty. Are they bling bling enough for you, Perry? They're pretty. I like them. have been seeked. Nice and love. Hey ho, Kermit Dean Frog here. There you go. Always got a lot of gab here. Dummy Almost too much point. sometimes. What's happening in Toughland today? What's this here? Is this a secret? This? Yeah. No secrets. All brand new, all exciting. All barra awesome. Hello. Good morning, this is Ned. <laughs> Hello Cameron. Hi Mark. What are you doing? I'm here just for two really quick reasons. Modifying the factory fuel filler neck because the fuel filler neck has a flap in it to go to two tanks, but there's only one tank in the car now, so we're moving that. Just trying to work out what to do, maybe weld up the sides or something. Uh, and also we are putting a bung in the trans pan for a trans temp sender. Guess what? The coffee guy's here. Hello, boys. <laughs> Boxer. I haven't had one of your coffees in too long. Look at that. <laughs> oh, and croissants. You <laughs> sign me up.
Thanks, Cameron. Cheers. Alrighty. Down at Tough Mounts. We've got the tank in the background. And this is all good and ready. So I'm gonna mask this up, give it a squirt of black paint, and uh, get it sorted. Professional. Let's go annoy Gav. This is Gav's car. It's got a little bit of work to do. This is a genuine LC GDR X U1. He's had for many, 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 many years. And he's decided to get it out of storage. Finish the tubs in it, which he started a million years ago. Got a big diff in it, or going in it, I think. And a big turbo LS in it. All right, here we go. Killer custom cables. You guys rock. Look at this, all the goodies. LS to 80 series. Excellent, look at that. Here is my wiring line. So as I mentioned before, the wiring loom that came out of the car sent that and the LS loom to Queensland. Perry's looking at me going, dude's talking to himself again. Sent that to Queensland, sent the Speedo which is in here, that's been recalibrated to the V8 and the Taco I mean. And this loom basically drops in and a few connections here or there and we can fire this baby up after a few other bits and pieces but uh, one step closer. Here's a bit where I'm going to start working out what's going on with this shifter. I've talked about this before. This is going to have to mount somehow above the transfer case shifter. It's not a big deal, it just means I've got to make an adapter and everything. It's got to seal through the floor because it's got to go underneath. So we cut a slot in the floor for that, plate it all up. It's all going to be nice and strong. But also the cool thing is, is because I've rotated the transfer case shifter, which normally sits on that side and it now sits on that side, I can cut this in half. I'm not going to use the front half because it doesn't have a gear stick anymore. It's going to have the auto. And just means punching a couple more holes in it, a couple of nuts hurts in the floor, and it should be a pretty simple process. It's just the actual auto shifter which you've got to build a, a console for, but once that's all done, it should be nice. Nice race car style shifter there, should be awesome. Oh, you gotta say something. Oh, no, 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 no! Messing around with the shifter. Yesterday made this base plate to go under the VE shifter that we're using. So that sits nicely up under there. And I've just cut a slot in the floor and I'm just making a basic template for what the floor plate for the bottom of the shifter needs to be. It's gonna be a bit of bracing there. I mean, it's, it doesn't take a lot of load that shifter, but I'd rather it be stronger than it needs to be. So uh, this is what it looks like so far. So this is your factory plate here. A few transfer cases of boot in there. That's where the gear stick used to come out. And that's gonna have a plate in there. So we use this original plate here. And then basically this plate here will mount up here on a slight angle, tilts back nicely. So basically you've got to build a tube between a floor plate there and there. So under this here, I'll just use a hole saw and cut two holes here and then just join them together. I haven't even tied it up yet, so it's a little bit messy. Um, nice just being able to go straight through the car builders though, so I'll get in there with a the linisher and clean it out. But this will basically have uh, four bolts in it to hold it to the floor here and here, and then maybe the plate can extend out here. That's why I've sort of followed the line there. And um, so we'll just trim up that plate and that can go across. I can even brace it back up off here. This is where the original console mounts, so I may actually have to move the console back a couple of inches, but that's only just a matter of 
couple of plates and brackets. So getting there, and it's all about making templates. Mind the spatters and all the crap on there at the moment. I'm sort of tacking stuff and getting stuff in place, but this is where I'm at with the shifter. Basically a top plate, a bottom plate, and an upright there just to get it all lined up. I had to open up the hole there so that the shifter can drop in. Basically a bit of bolt it into the car. It'll be sealed up to the floor. Do like a nice tube through the top. And then, uh, you know, I'm gonna finish off these corners, box it all in properly, weld it, linish it, and powder coat it. But uh, yeah, it'll bolt in the car, it'll clear the transfer case gear stick and all that, which I've just had to trim up and modify a little bit there just to give it a bit more clearance, but uh, it's all nice and neat and strong. So yeah, once it's all done, it should be uh, pretty good. And I've sat in the car there and um, the gear shifter seems to be in a pretty good spot, so I'm pretty happy with that. I haven't really wanted to bore you too much with welding and grinding and stuff like that, but now it's getting closer, I'll probably film a bit more of it. We are in the workshop and Perry is talking to Mike. This is Mike, big guy with amazing moustache. Hey, hello. Yeah. What are you doing, Perry? Oh, I'm just working things out. Okay, so this is the new loom from Killer Custom Cables, all with a K. Perry's just sitting it on there. Meanwhile, on the inside of the car, I'm making this. It's a bit dark inside though, that's up my nose. This is shifter console, mounts the VE Tiptronic shifter and then plates down onto the floor and nicely clears the transfer case lever which I've moved swapped to the other side because normally it comes over this side. And now we've just got to make up a plate to blank off the original gear stick hole. And this will get all finished cleaning it up and then send it off to powder coat. The gear shifter comes like that. So that's all nice and solid there, rather than making some sort of timber arrangement. And then the shifter just basically goes in through there, drops in, and then bolts in from underneath. So I'll make some sort of covers up to the side here, or utilize part of the original console, which somehow makes some of this work here. And then the only other thing to take into consideration is now is that the console here has to be moved back a couple of inches to clear that, but not a lot, so. And it's just basically extending where these bolts sit a little bit back with a tab or something like that, and everything will still be hidden underneath, so. Happy days. Alrighty. Motorbikes yesterday, and back on the Land Cruiser today. Uh, just got the shifter all working, that's all awesome. This is a factory rod. Really happy about that, no crazy cables, all that sort of stuff. Got my shifter console here, which uh, I'm gonna show you now. So a couple of quick shots of that in the car already, but this is pretty much where it's sitting. Um, this is all gonna get powder coated and prettied up a little bit more, but I'm also just looking at what to do with trying to make some sort of a shroud that goes over here to hide all, obviously, the workings of it. Um, that'll probably just be sheet aluminium that's all powder coated to match the bottom. So some sort of plate there or whatever, but um, I'll work it out. But um, yeah, it's all sort of looking pretty neat. Pretty happy with all that. And next step is around here in the dark, working out what to do with the accelerator pedal, because obviously the old one was cable, this big old spring-loaded contraption. Uh, don't mind the piece of steel here, but this is the by wire one. I was just messing around before with potential ways of sitting that, but that's not going to get used. I'm going to make a proper bracket for it, but uh, that is next on the cards. And up under the bonnet, just working on getting all the loom in and finishing all those bits and pieces. Uh, the guys from Killer Custom Cables, awesome setup. So just a few little loose ends that we'll have to chase up with them afterwards, which is pretty common. They said if there's any questions, hit them up. But then from there, fill it up with fluids, hook up some sort of intake to at least get it started, and then we can fire this thing up. Happy days, can't wait for this thing to fire up. Uh, it's gonna be pretty loud because it's gonna be straight out of the extractors, but uh, as soon as it's running and all that, then uh, be on a truck straight up to advance to get the rest of the exhaust system done to match the headers. And then just other loose ends here and there, and then it's done. So I can't wait. Uh, in the meantime though, uh, 
as you would have seen, I'm messing around with a bike at home, a bunch of old parts. I had a 92 Fireblade frame. Just really regret selling the last Fireblade I built. I never really covered on home TV. I probably should have. That bike was sort of just done on the side while I was busy working. But uh, this um, new one, I'm sort of covering it, not completely, but bits and pieces. And um, hopefully it should be a pretty cool thing once it's done. So just a nice bike to ride and being in the 92, it's gonna be 30 years old in two years time, which is pretty awesome. So first model Fireblade, so. Yeah, but um, progress on the tank here, going really well. Big thanks to Burson Auto Parts. Um, just made a big order with them for parts, like fuel pump, filters, um, uh, trans temperature gauge. They're getting me an auto meter one of them, which is awesome, they can order in parts. And also we've got a bunch of tools that are coming that are um, gonna be running through some stuff that I've been really looking forward to using as well. So once they get here, we'll go through some tools. I've actually got a really good use for the uh, one of the tools are sending me on the bike, so hopefully I'll get that soon and um, give you a look at what that does. And uh, yeah, stay watching. Thanks for watching as well. Really appreciate your support. If you haven't already subscribed and hit the notification bell, please do so. It really helps me and helps the channel and helps the sponsors. And um, yeah, the more of that we do, the more videos we can do. So yeah, thanks.